Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. My name is Alexandra Schweiger and I am here with Jeff Adkins today. He is a professional with a degree in business and a background um, in entrepreneurship. He's done everything from work in K-12 and higher ed to uh, different government entities, state, local, um, and has quite a bit of experience to share with us today. We're really excited to have him join us. He is not an alum, but he is connected to the CSU Ramley in many ways. Jeff, will you take a moment just to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your degree, why you pursued a business degree, and how you ended up connected to CSU? Um, sure, you bet. Um, Jeff Atkins, hi, hi all. Uh, nice to meet you virtually. And uh, yeah, I graduated actually in 1983. I'm dating myself for sure. And I was part of the uh, first ever computer information systems degree program within the business school at the college where I went. Um, so that's kind of where it all started from. And my affiliation with the Colorado State University, my, my oldest, uh, my youngest daughter is a senior at CSU and she's in the edu early uh, childhood education. And um, uh, so I got involved with CSU uh, via the Parent and Family Board. Awesome. Thanks so much. And for those of you just tuning in for the first time, our Career Connection session today continues a series of interviews where we talk to alumni, friends, parents at the university in a variety of fields. So as Jeff noted, his background is really in business and entrepreneurship, a topic I know many of you are interested in and passionate about. Um, and we hope that our students and young alumni are able to use these informational interviews and videos just as learning tours when deciding next steps, your career path, uh, really what entering into a new industry might look like. So if you're interested in further connecting, we'll provide avenues for that as well. So again, Jeff, thank you for joining us. We're thrilled you're here. We're excited that your daughter's a CSU Ram and congratulations on her last year here at CSU. Will you talk a little bit more about your career path, how you ended up on that path, um, and why you chose to make some of the choices you did make along the way? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, well, my degree, as I mentioned, is CIS, and the first job right out of college um, I got was an entry programming position. Um, and that lasted all of five days. Um, and uh, the reason being, I was stuck in a basement with no windows, with with 50 other people and all we did was program and write code. Um, so I knew that wasn't for me. So I needed to look for another opportunity. And maybe I should back I, Go ahead. Can I jump in real quick, Jeff? Will you just, for those watching who don't know what CIS is, let them know what CIS stands for? Sorry, Computer Information Systems within the business school. Yep, thanks for, for letting me know about that. And the reason why I kind of got involved with that initially, I was in, in school for three years, actually in pre-dent. And I don't know if it was the organic chem class or the fact that um, uh, I saw computers were a hot item and, and they were offering up a class in computers uh, information system. So I got into that and got excited. So that's how I even got into my degree program, uh, you know, kind of bounced around a little bit. So um, that first job then, as I mentioned, I got out of that and I said, okay, well, what am I gonna do? And I started uh, reaching out to headhunters. <clears throat> and not that it was gonna be an ideal job, but they, they found me a job. It was a 3 a.m. to noontime job. Um, and it happened to be at a small company called Intel back then. So, uh, and it wasn't anything fancy. Uh, it was in the days of the old mainframe computers that took up an entire room. Uh, if you even know about those, but uh, uh, I didn't do much. I did a menial job, but I made some pretty good money and it allowed me in the afternoons to go really search and find a job I really wanted to do. So that was beneficial. Um, as far as the next job I found, it was through um, uh, networking. My sister-in-law actually told me about an opportunity at ITT Services and it was for a corporate trainer in software and computers. Now, I had no experience as far as training. Um, however, what they did like is the fact that I got a degree in the CIS area, in the computer area. So uh, that turned out very well. Um, and what I really found out there was my passion. 
and my passion for, for really teaching. And they had me traveling the country back in the early 80s. I went to all the different ITT subsidiary companies and taught on software. Um, so I really enjoyed that a lot. I thought that was, that was my end all job. I was going to be there forever. Well, lo and behold, two years later, uh, they had layoffs and I, it was a last in first out. Uh, and I was the last one hired. So I was the first one out. Uh, I thought it was the end of the world. I had my job. This is what I want. However, what I found out was through networking, uh, I had an ITT colleague of mine said, Hey, there's a job over there at the city of Phoenix. I'm in Arizona, uh, over at the city of Phoenix. And it was for a manager of computer training for the city. And that worked out well for me. I got in there uh, in the bottom line, I doubled my salary. So I got laid off, ended up doubling my salary. So it's not always bad uh, when things go wrong in, in uh, different areas. So I did that for a while. But as I was doing that, really the passion went back to what I was doing before, the freedom of traveling around the country and putting on training seminars face to face with all kinds of different people. So I'd been thinking about maybe breaking out on my own. And, and so what I did, I contacted my old ITT headquarters main contact that, that set me up. And I said, well, what if I were to do this uh, on a consulting basis? And he loved the idea. Uh, so essentially, that's how I started my own business. And I called it computer education consultants and doing consulting and training around the country. And I got in with ITT. So two months, uh, two, I'm sorry, two weeks a month, um, I was traveling around. Now, the other two weeks, I was in Phoenix again. So that allowed me the capability to start expanding locally my business. And how I did that is I started to join local networking groups. We started a group called PACE, the Phoenix Association of Computer Educators, as the name implies, a group of educators from all kinds of different companies, from government entities to corporations. And one of them, a main contact I made there was at Intel again but it was in the learning and development. So I actually got my foot in the door to do more software training with my own company within Intel. And that started just as one site, one location in the Phoenix area. That grew exponentially. I ended up a few years later with over 30 contract trainers from around the country working with me. And we were on 15 different sites at Intel from Boston to Seattle. So it worked out very well through that networking aspect of it. <clears throat> Um, excuse me for a second. So after that, um, I was working through and I, I was hearing things, some things around the year 2000 about this new online learning that was coming about. Um, and it was an alternative, obviously, to the face to face training that I was doing. And I just got me thinking, going, hey, this might be a next step. Well, about that time, a friend of mine who I had met in a previous job because that, that my own company job allowed me to venture out and do different things. So my friend said, hey, there's, a, there's an up and coming, a new startup, a company called Skillsoft that's doing this e-learning, online learning. And um, I was able to get in there. And the reason I got in there is because they had an opportunity not to sell to corporate market, but to state and local governments, cities and counties, as well as education, higher eds, and K-12s, uh, which kind of fit in with my passion because I love the education side of it. <clears throat> so, so I jumped in with them and a short story here is essentially 18 years I spent with Skillsoft uh, in the uh, online learning and it was almost like running my own business because I was kind of doing my own thing. Uh, the bottom line is great culture, great people, a really fun time and we grew and grew. I, I had the opportunity to grow into different leadership roles over those years along the way and then, then we got bought out a few years ago. Um, and the culture changed, the people changed, um, and I wasn't having fun anymore. And as well, they were going through and, and replacing all the VPs at the time, including me. So there's the, another time I was out of work. Um, so, you know, I said, okay, well, let's, let's do the same thing. I thought back, you know, 20 years ago going, Hey, it turned out pretty good last time when this happened. So, so I kept my, my contacts open and, um, over the years, um, I've kept in contact with a lot of Skillsoft folks. Well, one of the VPs got a job with another startup company. And he said, hey, why don't you come over here and start up the state and local and education group called The Sled. And I did that for about eight months. Um, and I found it wasn't a good fit for me. Um, so I started looking elsewhere. Uh, the culture just wasn't fit 
for my style. So then I started looking and, and really leveraging those old Skillsoft networks and contacts and looking in educational technology because that was so successful and it was building and growing very quickly. And I reached out to some, some, some folks and they happened to be at a new startup, a company called Udemy. Uh, this doing some unique stuff uh, in, the, in the online learning industry. And I've been here now about a year and a half. Uh, I started up the state and local education group here. Again, great people, great fun, great culture. Um, so, so I'm back re-energized, re if you will, uh, with passion again. And uh, that's kind of been my journey. But you know, as you can see, the uh, networking has been crucial in my career, always talking. When I say networking, family, friends, um, and business colleagues. So that's kind of a, I don't know if it's a short story or a long story. It's an incredible journey is what it is. Um, and I definitely see where in each step networking was such a crucial element. I think what's often intimidating as a student or a young alum is that we feel networking is scary walking up to someone in a position of power, or we're not sure how to start that conversation. Will you think back to right after graduation or that first job, how you really did go about networking with folks you didn't know or reaching out and leveraging your degree in those conversations? Yeah, I, I would say no matter uh, what your style is yourself, um, I was very, uh, very much extroverted, so I, I, I never had a problem talking to people. And yes, initially when I was out of school, it's like, okay, I'm talking to this senior person and so forth. Oh, I'm, you know, it's, it's scary type of a thing. What I learned very quickly is they're just regular people. Um, they have a title, they've, you know, a lot of experience, but the bottom line is you build relationships and networks with people themselves, not their titles. So, so don't be, a, I, my advice would be, don't be afraid of that. Uh, because the other thing is, as you're talking to these folks, you have a lot to offer as a, a young alumni, a graduate, and everything you've gone through, your enthusiasm, your passion. So you've got a lot to offer, and don't just settle for, for something just to get a job. Find out what you're passionate about. Sometimes, as, I, as you know, I just described, I didn't know what my passion was, but I found out by, by working at a job. So don't be intimidated. Uh, you've, got, you've got more power than you, you think. I love that so much and I love the importance on being passionate and passion. I'm sure that comes across in your networking as well. I'm going to kind of flip the question a little bit. On the flip side, as someone who's in a number of those important positions and has probably done some hiring, when people are trying to network with you or reaching out to you, what is memorable? How do they go about really distinguishing themselves past just their degree? That, that is a great question. Um, and I have interviewed a few folks over the years, and you have to you have to take an aspect of it and be unique. And I'm sure everybody has LinkedIn accounts, and I've got friends that you, uh, that that work at LinkedIn Learning, so I've asked them about what grabs people's attention, and it's really doing something unique out there. You know, don't just get the resume out there. Don't just you know, send emails. You know, that's not going to cut it nowadays. You, you have to stand out. And I'll, I'll I'll share an example of it wasn't me, but um, my buddy at LinkedIn Learning said he was helping a, a new uh, senior that was getting ready to graduate. And, and this, this gal came up and created a video, a 30 second video of herself and posted it on her LinkedIn site. Well, then we got the networking going there amongst everybody. I don't know how many folks it went out to, but guess what? The CEO of a very large organization found it, said, this is cool, this is unique. And she just kind of talked about herself, what was interesting and things like that. So a lot of times people don't really understand. Those are things that you're, I mean, you've got resumes from 300 people with the same background. How are you going to stand out? And sometimes, again, it's that, it's that relationship. You know, being vulnerable, talk about yourself a little bit. But she ended up getting two offers right away. So that's one area I would say is, it, is, is be creative as you're going and talking to folks. And you're gonna get a lot of no's, it's life. But all you need is one good yes. I think that's so important to keep in mind that there are a lot of no's. And we know that students and young alumni right now in the job market are facing this uncertainty with COVID and just a little bit of economic hardship. Um, so it's a great reminder. 
I'm going to ask you to think back a little bit. It sounds like you've had this incredible journey, but um, in looking at where we learn the most, often it's where we misstepped or where we wish we would have done something differently. Is there anywhere along the journey where you would have changed something or if you could go back, you would tweak it slightly? A couple things we kind of talked about it is, you know, um, it took me a few years to find out and be really confident to be able to do the networking and reach out. Um, it just takes time, but I, I would have done it a lot earlier. Uh, being flexible, because as you mentioned, this is a journey. This, this is a life journey. So don't worry about setbacks. Um, you've heard a couple of mine. You know, if you don't fail, there's no way you're going to succeed. So, so keep that in mind. And I'm, I'm a big believer in, in everything happens for a reason. Um, so keep that positive attitude, be passionate about things and be persistent. I love that so much. And I love the believe in the better because it is coming. Um, as we start to wrap up, the intention behind these interviews is really to keep them short, quick, allow students and attendees to ask questions. But is there any closing advice you would offer our students? Um, I, I can, as they look towards their careers. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, advice, networking, of course, be passionate, uh, find, find people you want to be around because work is a lot of your life. Um, uh, it, the culture, make sure it fits your style as well. And I would say, you know, get involved with community service. Uh, that's a great networking event. For me, I started out, I was, I was doing things like, uh, uh, you know, feeding the homeless. Then I got into education and students. Uh, with my background and I was fortunate enough to be on uh, my my girls local school district the superintendent advisory board and then that moved into an opportunity to help them uh, define and create the first ever education foundation um, and then when my daughter chose CSU I ran into John Henderson uh, my fresh at my freshman orientation and John John's the director of parent and family programs he's also assistant dean of students at the student affairs and he approached me and said, hey, we're starting up a parent and family board here, you know, to really to engage the parents and families of the students throughout their life cycle and beyond at CSU. And that was very exciting to me. So I've been on the board since then. We have a great group of volunteers that helps in that area. So, so reach out because I, I now, know have, have, now have contacts through the board around the entire world. Such great advice and really just such an inspirational journey. Thank you so much for sharing it all today. We're going to hand it over to folks to ask a couple of questions. But first, I just want to remind everyone that if you're in the middle of the career search, need networking tips, jobs tips, uh, really any of the above, alumni.colostate.edu has a number of resources for you, as does career.colostate.edu. Um, so feel free to reach out. Jeff, if they want to stay in contact with you afterwards, is there a good way to do that? Sure, they can contact me on my LinkedIn page. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, uh, Jeff Atkins, A-T-K-I-N-S, and feel free to uh, you know, reach out via my, my email as well. I didn't know if you wanted me to give that or not. Yeah, we will include that in follow-up surveys. Um, if you didn't register for this event, but you would like it, again, alumni at colostate.edu, and we're happy to make that connection for you. So just a couple of questions are coming in the chat that I have for you. Um, feel free to keep questions rolling in. But one of them, you mentioned that you have a little bit of a background in entrepreneurship. Do you have any advice specifically for folks who want to start their own company? It seems to be a hot topic these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's important to find a niche that's growing. Uh, and sometimes you don't know that. I mean, uh, a computer education consultants what, wasn't the first thing I tried. Um, so going back to that, keep, keep, get your fingers into a number of different things and different opportunities. And also to, uh, just twofold to see, is there a market for that? And is this something I really love to do? And I love that you retouched on that question about, do I love this? Are the people good? Because that actually leads into our next question. You've talked a lot about the importance of enjoying the people you're working with. How do you know when it's the right time to jump or leave a company, especially in these uncertain times, um, if you're not as happy? Uh, great question as well. And it, when I revert back to the, the time was at Skillsoft and a company bought us, uh, literally, um, I probably stayed too long. Uh, I stayed an extra two years, even though I wasn't having fun. I stayed a full year and it was, it was not fun at all. Um, however, 
um, good things came out of that. So I would say if you really get a feeling and you're looking at the big picture and going, this isn't for me, you know, start doing something about it. It doesn't mean you quit without a, a job lined up, but, but do what you really uh, are going to have fun at. I love that. And I love that we're ending on this note of fun. It doesn't look like we have any more questions in the chat, but again, we are happy to connect folks with Beth after the fact, um, and also happy to provide any applicable career resources. Again, alumni.colostate.edu um, or career.colostate.edu. We really are here and committed to your success. Um, but with that, I just want to say a huge thank you to you, Jeff. Thanks to supporting both of our students and our young alums um, and sharing some of your experience and your journey. I think there's some huge takeaways and just the importance of networking, the importance of staying connected to people who support us and who um, fuel our passion. And I think what's really exciting about that is that there's RAMs all across the United States who are ready to support and to fuel your passion. So no matter what next steps look like, um, we're, you're part of a community ready to help you succeed. So again, thank you so much. Wishing everyone a wonderful day and go Rams. Go Rams.